Now there's one unfortunate fact of life, and that is that energy costs are rising. And how you deal with that might come in several ways. You could just simply pay more out of your pocket to um, match your expenses. I mean, that's pretty much what most people do. Or you could look for ways to reduce your electricity cost. And that could include natural gas, depending on if you're an uh, energy provider or you require um, natural gas. Some places, apartment complexes and so on, don't charge you. But the point is, is that um, in order for you to save money on your electric bill, you basically have to look for ways to reduce the cost or look into alternative energy. Now, this video is not about the alternative energy. This is actually about the things that you can do to save money around your home. Most energy companies out there send you newsletters and emails and whatever on tips and tricks on what to do here, but it mainly focuses on the major things like um, insulating your windows or leaving your fridge door closed or turning off lights. Real basic stuff, but you'd be surprised just what consumes electricity in your home. If you think that simply turning a device off means it's no longer being powered and costing you money, you're probably wrong. Now there are some exceptions to that rule, but for the most part, modern electronics consume electricity while they're plugged in even if they are not in use. Finding those parasitical items and deciding whether or not you want to unplug them or get rid of them altogether is going to be completely up to you. But to find those items, to find out what's really costing you your um, uh, electric bill to go up, you need to get something like this. This is a kilowatt meter. It is a kilowatt easy meter. It's the P3. I paid, it was right around $25 at Home Depot. It was on sale. They make two versions of this. This is the, the kind of the uptick version, I guess, because you can factor in you know the cost of each item month year week day those kind of things uh but this is really nice to have and i will give you a an actual scenario where this particular item helped me out a lot and saved me quite a bit of money we used to have comcast and we had one of the dvrs the hd dvrs that um, they provide for uh, i was like 10 or 12 dollars a month and little did I know that while that thing was powered off, and I should have known this, that it was consuming quite a bit of electricity. There's a hard drive on the inside. It is constantly compressing and converting video because it, most DVRs try to keep an hour-long buffer so that uh, you can pick up live TV and rewind and things like that. That's just how they work. So those things are constantly running, and they're consuming electricity even when they're not on. Just being plugged in is enough for them to consume electricity. Now, the HD DVR that I had, it was about a year old. And I was curious as to why my electricity bill was high. And I went around and started plugging some things into this uh, kilowatt meter to figure that out. And I got to my DVR. I found out that my DVR was using 140 watts of electricity per hour to run. 140 watts. That's no joke. And I couldn't believe it. 140 watts. Now let's do the math here. For every hour that it was in standby, 140 watts at 15 cents per kilowatt hour. Every hour it was costing me 2.1 cents per hour to run that. Now 2.1 cents with a 24 hour period is about 50 cents a day. Okay. So you're looking at about $15 per month to actually have that unit running. Add to that the cost of the unit itself per month, which I believe was $12 a month. So when you've got your $12 and your $15 just to run the electricity, you're looking at $27 a month just to have your DVR unit. That's crazy, okay? I couldn't believe that I was actually paying about $15 a month just in electricity costs to have that unit. So at that point I decided that I was just going to get rid of it. And we didn't really watch all that much TV, so I went ahead and just got rid of cable altogether. I have Netflix and Hulu and uh, I got my uh, HD antenna so I get my local channel so I was fine. 
So dropping Comcast altogether with the electricity savings, and you could sort of factor in the fact that we you know watched less TV, so less TV consumption, but I was basically saving around $130 a month just getting rid of the cable. So that was a, a big deal for me. Now, I know not everybody's going to run out and start canceling their cable because, oh, my God, they have a DVR. But for me, in my situation, I decided that I didn't need the cable. I didn't need the DVR. And it wasn't something that I really thought about until I got the kilowatt meter and plugged it in and figured out how much money I was paying just to have it running in electricity. So there was a situation there where it saved me money. But I went around and, you know, was figuring out what all was basically being consumed in electricity. And I was surprised to find out just where everything was costing me. And I literally cut my electricity bill in half. Not only was I more conscious about lights being left on, um, but, you know, I unplugged things that I rarely used, just rarely ever used. I mean, my uh, my Blu-ray player, I mean, you know, in standby, it uses, you know, three, four watts an hour. You know, that doesn't seem like much, but it adds up. Uh, my printers, my printers, even though they're Energy Star printers, I have a laser printer. It's a black and white laser printer as well as a color inkjet printer. Even though they were in standby, they're still combined using about 5 watts per hour. And I can probably tell you that I probably maybe print one thing a month. So just having that kind of stuff unplugged and not being, you know, consuming electricity, you know, managed to cut my electric bill about in half just by doing those kind of things. Now, that doesn't mean that every time you're done with your TV, you unplug it or... Uh, you know, your most frequently used things, because I've actually heard of people saying that it actually does damage to the electronics to continuously plug and unplug them, and I can sort of believe that. So my TV stays plugged in, um, and uh, my computers stay plugged in. Uh, however, uh, I'll get into that later. But anyway, so, you know, like I said, I cut my electric bill almost in half just by uh, being a little bit more conscious and unplugging the things that I rarely, if ever, used. And that's exactly what this kilowatt meter does. Um, it's pretty simple. I have an extension cord here already. Um, you just this extension cord is plugged into the wall, and you get this information here. Um, this is uh, basically the the voltage coming out of um, the um, plug or extension cord, and you know you've got amps, uh, watts, volt amps, uh, the frequency which is sixty. Um, you know, it, it, it has a lot of information here, plus, you know, your cost. You can, you know, put in, you know, it's been running for a little while, so you can put in uh, how much it costs for you to actually run the items. And I've got the rate in here, 14.9 uh, cents per kilowatt hour. So if you consume one kilowatt of electricity, you would be paying 14.9 cents if you're paying my rate. Everybody's rate is different. I've heard of some states being as high as 21, 22 cents per hour. I've heard them as low as 10 cents per hour. So every state is different, every town, county, you know, all that other stuff. So you have to actually figure that out for yourself. It's really easy. You just take your total electric cost and divide it by the number of kilowatt hours that you used, and that's your rate. And it probably changes. Mine minutely changes uh, every month. So if I use a consistent 100 kilowatt hours, Every single month, my bill would slowly be rising by a penny or two or more a month just because they raise rates. That's just the way that it is, extra fees and things. So, anyway, uh, it's, it's you know pretty simple. Um, it gives you a lot of information here. But what I have here is a box fan. This is a standard box fan. And it's funny, I used to have this fan running all the time, 24 hours, in my bedroom. Because me and my wife sleep with a fan on. It's just the way, you know, some people are like that. You have to have background noise. So we always slept with the fan on. And little did I, you know, I just thought, okay, it's just a fan. On the box it says uses only pennies a day in electricity. Well, yeah, maybe for some people. But I figured out just how much electricity this thing really does use. And uh, I'll try to get this. I've got it in watts right now. This is going to be... Probably a little bit loud, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this. I'm going to put it on the low setting first. Okay, it's on low. This is the lowest setting that the fan will go. And as you can see here, it's using uh, right around 
85, 86 watts. Okay, that's the lowest setting. Now imagine if you have that running 24-7 on low. That's, that's quite a bit of electricity. You're looking at about 12 hours or so would consume one kilowatt. So if you had it running for 24 hours, then you're looking at two kilowatts, which for me is about 30 cents per day. That's on low. Let's go ahead and turn it up to medium. And medium, we're looking at uh, about 106, 107 watts. That's on medium. That's pretty crazy. So in 10 hours, I would consume a kilowatt. And uh, yeah, let's put it on high. Okay, now we're on high. 126 kilowatts. That's almost as much as my DVR was using when I had it plugged in. 126 kilowatts. That's how much the electricity this thing, this simple box fan, simple box fan uses. We'll go ahead and turn that off. But uh, so a simple box fan uses that much electricity. It's crazy to think about it, but I had that fan running all the time. It was, it just, you know, I had it running on low. I didn't really think about it. I thought, okay, well, it'll, it'll keep the bedroom nice and cool and, and whatever. And I, I just. Uh, I was surprised when I saw just how much electricity a single box fan used and contributed to my electric bill. And it's crazy. <laughs> it really is. I can't put it in any other words than that. So with that in mind, you would be surprised. Go around your home and, well, first get one of these. Um, you know, I'm not a salesperson form or anything, but this, quite honestly, is pretty much the best tool. Uh, that you're going to be able to use to figure out what's consuming electricity. But uh, just go around your home and figure out uh, what's consuming electricity, both in standby and in use. Now, there's there's going to be some variation. Like my um, my plasma TV that I have, it uses about 2 watts in standby. And uh, it's right around 200 watts when it's in use, but it all depends on the, the picture. Uh, uh, you know, a brighter picture or a darker picture, it varies between those two and how much electricity it needs to produce that picture. So you're never going to be able to get an exact amount, but you can get a pretty close, you know, average as far as uh, how much electricity an item uses. Now, what did I do for the box fan? What was my alternative? Well, believe it or not, we already had a boombox stereo in our bedroom. And all I did was I changed the radio station to the lowest station, which was like 87 0.7 and I disconnected the antenna so all you hear now is static that that radio that I have uses about 8 watts of electricity per hour and I only have it on when I'm actually sleeping so yeah now in the summertime it's gonna be a little bit different we might have this fan on low just to keep it cool but in the winter time there's no reason to have this fan running and there's plenty of noise coming from just static on the radio uh, so, I mean, just look for just look for ways to save money. That's really all you have to do. And uh, I've been doing it. I'm really conscious about my electric usage. I'm constantly turning down the thermostat, even though I have people in my home who like to turn it back up. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really looking for ways to save money. I'm getting into alternative energy, and I'm just genuine, excuse me, gen, generally using less electricity. And... I've converted all of my lights to LEDs. All of my lights are 40 watt equivalent LEDs and they use 6 watts of electricity per hour. I, I literally, I spent uh, it's about $150 on the, the number of bulbs I needed to replace everything. Okay, so $150 up front, you know, and I did have, uh, I, they were 14 watt uh, CFLs. So it's going to take some years to pay that off, but... You know, this stuff requires investment. You can't save money until you invest money in most cases. In this case, replacing all my bulbs cost me that much money. But, uh, you know, in three, four years, five years maybe, it'll pay for itself. And, um, you know, I just, uh, I look at it like um, the amount of money that I'm saving my electricity of all the stuff that I've cut back, I use that to pay for the bulbs, which will compound the savings down the road. So, all right. You heard me babble long enough, so uh, I am going to get more videos up of the kind of stuff around the home that consumes electricity that you might be surprised, and what I'm doing to actually save. So I'll be looking for those videos. Thanks.